One month after Brooklyn's own Eucharistic revival, we are now preparing for the National Eucharistic Congress on July 17th. In fact, the pilgrims are already making their way to Indianapolis. Here to talk more about it is Diocese of Brooklyn's Bishop Robert Brennan. Hi, Bishop. Hi, Christine. So, Bishop, we're still on a high from the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic revival. Do you hope having the national pilgrimage come through the diocese will kind of keep that momentum going? Absolutely, absolutely. It is, it is great going around to visit different parishes. People are talking about their experience of that our Eucharistic revival event, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to having the pilgrimage pass through Brooklyn on its way from. Um, New Haven to uh, Indianapolis. This is going to be an exciting couple of days for us. It definitely is. And last year, the executive director of the National Eucharistic Congress, Tim Glomkowski, met with Pope Francis, who shared his excitement for the event. Let's listen. We had a, a, a private audience in Rome uh, with the Holy Father where he really shared his heart for this movement, um, an encounter uh, with, with Jesus in the Eucharist that leads us on mission as a church. And um, his energy and enthusiasm were clear for the mission. It was an incredible moment. In that meeting, Pope Francis promised to name a delegate for the Eucharistic Congress. And as you know, this week he did naming Cardinal Louis Tagle, pro-prefect of the Dicastery for Evangelization. How important is it that the Pope sends a personal representative? It's very important. Um, it, it happens uh, for large major gatherings of the church. And this is a gathering of the church in the United States. Um, and his choice of Cardinal Tagli couldn't be better. Um, we, I, I know him a little bit. We've had different um, uh, opportunities to connect. But I'll tell you something. Um, when we went to World Youth Day, the pilgrimage to the young people from Brooklyn, Queens, we went to Fatima. And he kind of got swapped in for mass at the last minute. And he was amazing. The young people just um, clung to everything he said. It, he can be a little bit funny, but he makes a very good, uh, very important point. He's, he's uh, he'll be a wonderful delegate for the United States. Oh, sounds like it. Now we all remember the Pew Research study, which kind of inspired the revival. It showed that only one third of Catholics believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. So since this has all started, how have you seen the hearts of the faithful change? I've, I've seen some changes. It's hard to uh, determine exactly how um, things uh, line up. But, you know, um, first of all, I always said, some of the issue is an, an issue of expression um, in terms of not that people don't believe in the real presence of Christ, but really have a hard time expressing what that means. Um, on the totally other side, I think a deeper crisis connected to it is knowing Jesus. It's, uh, you know, how do you talk about real presence unless you really know Jesus Christ? and have that relationship. And I see that deepening around here. I see that being something that's very important. Even going back when I first came, the uh, some of the concerns at the Synod, when you think about it, it was how can we get to know Jesus Christ better? How can we live our faith out better? Pastors are telling me in the last few months, um, I don't think it's because of anything we did, but just a, a general change. Um, pastors are noting greater numbers um, people coming to Mass, especially around Lent and Holy Week and Easter, we're starting to see some of, if not the pre-pandemic numbers, close to those pre-pandemic numbers. And I think um, that may have a lot to do with just people becoming more comfortable and also feeling the need for what the Church has to offer, for that encounter with Jesus Christ. Well, that's great news. And so we were told there was a slight change in the route for pilgrims in Brooklyn. You've invited Bishop Mansour of Our Lady of Lebanon, Maronite Cathedral, to join. Talk about what this adds to the journey. Well, it's important to remember that um, the Maronite Church is the Catholic Church. Uh, St. John Paul II used to speak of the, the church speaking with two lungs. And so... Um, there is another Brooklyn cathedral. There's, the, uh, there's our cathedral of St. James and, of course, the Co-Cathedral. But um, there's a Maronite 
cathedral serving people with Lebanese backgrounds. It really extends to a greater part of the East Coast, at least. And Bishop Mansour is uh, the bishop of that diocese. And so it's important. A visit to Brooklyn has to visit both um, St. James and Our Lady of Lebanon. So um, I'm glad. Basically, this is an experience of the whole Catholic Church, not um, the Latin Rite diocese. It's, a, it's an expression of the whole Church, and we share the one Eucharist and the one faith. And we, we are very good friends with each other in, in here in Brooklyn. All right. Well, it's going to be a great experience this weekend for everyone. Bishop Robert Brennan, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. To learn more about all things related to the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage and Congress, just go to EucharisticRevival.org. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti, anchor of Currents News. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button on this video. And if you want to see more content just like it, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching because we are putting your faith in the news.